in moments of time, we have moments of time to help someone. It's amazing to me when a starving man stands in front of the late, a pastor or any congregational representative, and they openly say, I'm sorry, I represent every single soul here in front of the house of the Lord, and I'm not passing this problem along to any one of them to let them decide whether or not they want to help or not. That's probably the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life, that other people so take other people's rights away. My rights have been commandeered for me multiple times by sisters who are older and think they're wiser, but they're not. They have violated federal law on many occasions, but I don't know how to say it other than that. They literally destroyed my life and are continuing to try to do so with their lies and their police interactions and everything they do to make it like they didn't do anything illegal on my name. Or they cover for their neighbors who sort of seem to be doing things to my property and to my possessions and every other aspect of my life. In time, we have moments to love people, and when I love someone, she just can't tolerate me enough to give me one can of food. Isn't that amazing? That people, pastors, people we love, and the people we care for the most in the world end can't even produce one dollar to provide someone food. I literally stood in front of a lady today that I've met a couple times in a church. She gave me an apple, but did she really think that one apple was going to sustain me for the entire day? You see, in her mind, she was going to wait till Sunday to talk about the problem. She herself didn't see the sin of the actuality of a man stood before her with no food in his mouth, no food to go to, and no home to sleep in, and she literally couldn't figure out how to produce one can of dollar food from a store literally around the corner on a drive that she would leave here from for taking three to five minutes to go to it and to find one. Isn't that something? That people literally think, it's not my problem, it's not my day to help, and I'm not liable to God for anything. That's the crazy thing. These people have homes, cars, money, food that they like and choose to have for themselves, their own bodies, their own decisions, and practically they won't allow other people to make a decision whether or not they'll help someone to produce one can of food. Dog food, I suppose, could work, but the reality is we can buy cans of food for 50 cents to 70 cents, and people just think they'll do that. Now in life we have moments of time to be something to other people, and we can either ignore that moment of time and continue to play a game that we're not interested in, we're not liable to God for those times they reach out to say, help me please. And we say, no, I'm not helping you. I'm too mad at you for that. I'm too angry about something. I'm too uh, pissed off about this, that, and the other thing that literally the individual has absolutely no concept about. And isn't that amazing? They just continue to do it over and over again with local law help, with local pastoral support, and openly they totally lose a man down every time. They don't think about what it looks like, they don't think about what it feels like, they don't think about how they look like representation their organization even. They literally don't realize that they're on the job and they're representing a large organization that's literally saying, we don't care about homeless people and we don't care about whether or not they eat or not and we don't care whether or not someone starves to death in our place. Isn't that amazing that people across the land feel this way until it happens to them? Until they're literally sitting in a restaurant but they're only buying food for their children because they don't have enough money to pay for themselves or they generously donate a little bit of money towards someone who was really struggling and they didn't really have enough fully for themselves, but they did it anyway. You see, if someone said something to me like I've said to other people and I had the funds, I literally would leave the place by foot if I had to, walk somewhere, buy the food, and bring it back. I guess that's the difference between how my father raised me versus how my mother raised my sisters. Each and every single one of them has allowed me to starve and freeze in the night's cold. Even the people that I love the most and have left my life's worth to have allowed that too. Not like I was obligating them to anything, but it's truly the most interesting thing. That people are not concerned with food until they find they have none in their house. And then they go to the grocery store and pudding, they get new food. But if you've lost your employment, if you've lost your company, if you've lost your job, if you've lost your credit, if you've lost your credit cards, or someone has stolen your bank cards, or shopped around on your stuff and you have no money, how are you supposed to produce that food? Sure, we can use the coupons to McDonald's, but there's always some snotty manager who doesn't recognize the fact that anybody who hangs on to their receipts to take advantage of a deal should still get the deal regardless of what the timing on it is. Promising I'll just do it this time because I feel like it doesn't really represent the large organization that has thousands of french fries or hundreds of hamburgers and openly it's sort of ill will. It's like, you're in struggle and I don't care. I'm in struggle and you don't care, which isn't necessarily true because it's a presumption. The reality is that in life, we are still liable in front of God's house. And that's all I can really talk about these days because God is the only one who helps me to find food when I need it.
tells me what I should purchase because when I do get it, whether it's for purchase or someone gifted it over, it lasts. It lasts me more than one meal, thankfully. When we're trying to get in touch with people and make network things, people refuse to give out their phone numbers. They literally refuse to give back full emails because they're liable to that organization for the lies they spew about how they're willing to help and how they will get you additional things and they'll go do it and then they'll make it like, oh, they got to do things in rush. That their little life with a Bible study is more important than a starving man. That their little social network in that group is far more superior than someone who's standing before you literally looking like Jesus in those moments of time because Jesus literally went to the house of sinners. He didn't live with the priests of the day. He didn't literally go into those churches and stay there. He wasn't even welcomed. Yet he went to the places who'd handled the money, who did the treasury, who did all sorts of other things, and they literally just said, sure, we'd love to have the God's most highest being in our home. It made them feel better. He helped them to raise themselves up, and literally, that's what they do. But today we have too many people who are so busy looking for Mr. Right that they don't see Mr. Wrong in front of them. And they totally miss the one who the God in heaven planned for them. They're not interested in the magic that they shared and how that magic they shared literally has saved a man's life multiple times. Didn't save him from everything because he's struggling with being a difficult person. He doesn't want to hit back because it's not law. It's not proven, but it's openly pretty obvious and pretty logical that it's the other people doing it to him. But he doesn't want to be like them. He wants to be more like Jesus. Turn the other cheek. Have someone come out and say, I'm a sinner, but I'll look after you. I've been ill will towards you, and I'm going to show you love now because it's the right thing to do. In God's house, there are many rooms. Is something we talk a lot about in our faith at House of God, where I've practiced my own ministry, my own faith of practice, and openly, it's how I talk sometimes. The reality is I have the right to do it because the Lord has gifted me this gift after someone else I loved showed me the tool. I could barely make things move before, but now I can fling a chain as far as it goes, and it's not me doing it. The reality is that faith fobs allow us to see the Lord's energy and what he'd like us to do and not do. Too many people do it based on their own minds, their own hearts, and their own soul's thinking, as opposed to looking to God and saying, Lord, what should I do in this moment of time? How should I serve Jesus the most to prove that I am truly walking in my faith as a Christian person? being this good old Christian that everybody likes to tout they are. Even total strangers will say that to me. I'm doing this because I'm a good Christian. Like, really? Great. Then why am I being stolen from in the middle of the night, and why is my shirt ripped that was not ripped before, and openly I've not been rough on anything? So that's the reality. There's always someone out there who's lying, and the liars of the land have ruined America. We're getting worse and worse in that regard. And that's something the Lord would say if he was here, right here in front of us now. What is it that we look for? The angels around us in our life. The people of beauty in their souls. The people of intelligence in their minds. The people of wit and wisdom in their emotions. And the people who are cool, calm, cool, and collected in times of struggle. If they lose it, if they go off, then there's love that can always bring them back down. And there's love in me that says, it doesn't matter how many times you're angry at me, my love. I will love you until the day I die. And if I die, you will inherit all the possessions that I own, provided they've not been totally stolen from, completely and ruined. But openly, you'll also invest in, in receive the humble amount of life insurance policy that totals the worth of my life. I paid that little proceed policy, and I'm probably due to pay it again, but openly I have the right to tell you, it's out there. It only costs me $48 a month for both, but it's worth to you thousands and thousands of dollars. And I guess that's not even worth one can of food. Isn't that interesting? that I'm not even worth one can of food in this world today. That a lady that I met through a church, a friend's church, couldn't even think to bring an extra can of food in with her today, even though she knew my plight. It's like some person, some police officer, someone somewhere is saying, this is a lie, he can get it from his family, and I'll say, no, I've severed all contact with my birth family for the most part. They've litigated me to death to the point that I might end up in jail because of the ways they've interacted with illegally with my lawyer in another situation that was handled poorly. I had a deferment. I wasn't even told about it. The woman decided not to tell me about it. I could have gotten out of this scot-free. And isn't that interesting? That someone I don't even know decided that my life wasn't worth getting out of something that was just a mistake and under misunderstanding scot-free. Instead, she totally just destroyed every little aspect of that and put me into a position of being locked into this horrible community for six months. And I might not survive it because I can't find a job because of credit issues and other things that siblings did to me. Not that I did to myself. 
and they won't even see their responsibility because they're too busy monkeying with my clothes, changing my cuffs around, making them put on their backwards, turning the shirt sleeves around on my favorite shirts, resizing them so they're skinny so I can't fit them, and openly, who the hell gave them the right to do anything like that? You see that my siblings think they're smarter than me. They're not. I just get tired and just don't bother to say what everything I've seen them do. And openly, if it's not them, they're allowing a monster to do it, and they call me a liar when I tell them it's true. So, why would I want to spend time with any of them? And practically, they're also in illegally getting onto my accounts, my social media accounts, my YouTube accounts, and they're editing things, which isn't their lawful right to do. You see, God moves me. Nobody else does. And openly, I don't have to do anything other than tell you the truth of what's my factual experience. I've even got therapy people who literally say, my schedule's way too busy for the next six months. I don't bite at all. You're working two days a week because you've got a provision of your husband who's doing things for you. And that's the problem that you can't even get off your ass for one extra hour a week for someone else to have the right help at the right time. And I am supposed to do this, simply get an evaluation. But then I'm supposed to stay in therapy because some asshole judge thought that the evaluations done by all the PhD level people that thought I was perfectly fine isn't good enough for him. Who the hell gave him the right to decide that? You see, so many federal laws have been violated here by judges and police and other people that they just don't get the liability until it's going to be too late for them all. Every single person who's violated my rights will get hit by not only God, but also the legal situation they put themselves in through their own lies. They can produce all the lies in the world, but they can't produce the facts of why I went through the situation like I did. They lied through the whole thing. They ruined myself federally and openly. That's not their lawful right to do. When I look for a politician going into the new season, I'm not looking for a liar like Trump. I'm not looking for a millionaire who doesn't understand the humblest of humble people in the world. I'm looking for someone who's a fighter, who knows the law, and who will regard other people's lives, loves, and lifestyles with regard and dignity, privacy, confidentiality, and, most importantly, rights, the right to decide. So many young pastors in their 20s think they have the right to decide for their entire congregation whether or not a person, one individual soul, would produce one can of food for one dollar for a man who's starving. Isn't that amazing that these young people don't understand the law of the Lord? The law of the Lord says, this is my body and I shall not want. But that's not exactly what's happening here. What's happening is that people are not helping homelessness because they just don't care. They don't care that they're not representing Christ in it. And if you mention that to them, they think they're doing just fine in Christ's land. That's not true. Now I'm running on a spit. I've not had much to drink today. And openly, I hope you're doing well. But in my life, I've been harmed by people who just lie, steal, and cheat my life away. And when I talk about these things, nobody wants to listen because it's too real, it's too raw, it's too transparent. But even the most famous of the people who've got millions of dollars at their disposal won't give me one can for one dollar of food. So what does that say to a person? Interesting, isn't it? If it's not on television, then it's not worth doing, I guess. If it doesn't get the publicity and the fame then or the laugh track, then maybe it's not worth it. Is that really what we've come to as a society in the people who believe in God and the house of the Lord is most high in my life? And the magic is incredible. But the one I love won't even listen to the magic. The stories that I could tell of the magic of God are amazing. But no one wants to believe it because everyone wants to believe in a satanic force over the Lord's magic that produced water into wine and millions of pieces of fish for communities that came to hear him speak. One pastor this past weekend did a phenomenal job speaking, great presentation, but he never ever mentioned Jesus in any of the equation. And I just thought, wow, how do you preach without talking about Jesus? So, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. My prayer is that one gal that I love will get off her ass and come and make that difference. But I'm tired, I'm old, and I'm literally tired of the bullshit teenage crap that I have to keep listening to, this rhetoric that I did something wrong. I don't remember any, anything wrong other than trying to win a girl's heart. And that's it. Men do that. Men are old-fashioned. Try to woo. They don't stalk. They try to woo. But women lie, steal, and cheat men out of their lives. And that's what's happened to me. So go to hell if you can't understand how that works. And I don't care who stares at my faith. I don't care who makes fun of me. Because I'm in God's house. And that's all that matters. Thanks for listening.